Hello everybody, I'm JP Nordea. I'm standing tonight for uh, Elton Davids on uh, Sports Federation TV. Of course, uh, broadcasting sport in and around the Western Cape. This is now the show that's looking after sport on behalf of the uh, Western Cape Provincial Sports Confederation. We'll take a look at sport across all six districts. Uh, Karoo, the West Coast, the Overberg area, Cape Winelands, um, Eden, and of course in the Metro. So sport galore across the province, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, Federation TV, of course, every Friday night from 9 to 10 and uh, repeats. In case you missed it tonight or you want to tell your friends that they can catch the repeat um, uh, on a Saturday from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. Coming up on the show tonight, we'll talk about black ball. It was uh, the South African Championships recently held up in Johannesburg. Uh, we'll speak to Ilana Mayer, the world-famous Ilana Mayer. joins us a little bit later when we find out about a new academy that's been launched in Stellenbosch. It's called Enduro CAD. And for those of you that don't know, most recently over in, um, I, th I think at Grand West, it was the World Ice Hockey Championships. So there's been a lot of sporting activity in and around the uh, Western Cape area over the last few months. And tonight, those are our sports that we'll be uh, talking about. Remember, you can, of course, send us your uh, photographic images of your sporting activity and your results and fixtures. And uh, we'll be happy to include it right here on Sports Federation TV. But we start off tonight with Black Ball and the chairman of uh, Western, Western Cape. Black Ball is uh, with us on, um, on Federation TV, Elton Rinquist. Elton, welcome. And uh, um, yeah, welcome to Federation TV. It's good to be back. Thanks for having me. And uh, what I've been listed here as Black Ball legend, <laughs> <laughs> Paul Bennett. How are you, Paul? I'm fine. I'm fine. And you? Not too bad, not too bad. Let's quickly, before we start talking about uh, the South African Championships, Elton, of course, we're going to bring you to that in a second or so. Paul, um, I've got to dip a little bit into this, this, this title, legend. You know, the, there's normally more to the story legend than just winning competitions. How long, how long and, uh, and I'm sure Elton Davis asked these questions before, um, how long have you been playing black ball? 20, black ball itself, uh, around about since 2006. 2006. Yeah. So you've been playing since you were a kid? Yeah. Uh, yes, I've been playing since about 16 years old. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, but I uh, started playing like serious league in about 20, yeah. when I was 21. Elton, what, what's the average age for people to get started play in, in black ball? Well, black ball has been around since 2005. Um, in South Africa now. In, in South Africa. Africa. But of course, internationally for longer. I mean, no. when did black ball? No. No, 2005? 2005. Globally, it was at the start of Black Globally, Ball. it was a change oh. of the rules in the p in the pool segment to make it more exciting and more entertaining for the spectators to watch. Right. It was so it was, on the concept of for the players by the players. So the players that came in were more of the senior players that started at that time, but it's been taken over now by more of the youngsters, more of the juniors coming through. We've got quite a bit of juniors that's coming through that are in the between the ages of. 11 and, and 18. So it's currently. quite a it's quite a young sport then. Correct. Um, internationally, a um, lot of countries, a lot of uh, other nations playing black ball. Uh, who, who would be the standout countries? That would mostly be the UK. The United Kingdom. The United yeah, Kingdom. yeah. yeah. So a lot of players. So whose idea was it to change the rules and come up with black ball? Was it? Did it happen overseas or did it happen in South Africa? Well, it was. It was a combination of. Players in, uh, in South Africa and overseas who were playing world rules at that time. Okay. That, that felt that um, world rules was, at the time, had a more closer technical side towards snooker and it was taking too long to finish games off. Yeah. And they were looking more at those who were wanting to break and finish. So they were trying to put more glamour into the game. So they wanted to have the best of both worlds so you can learn to play the technical yeah. and the side. So, so that was the vision. So, Paul, you reckon that the, the, the British guys, the English team... Yeah, they, they, they've always been the sharpest. They are. They, they've been coming on with the game for uh, much longer than what we have. And, and, and most of the professional players also come from there. Yeah. So, uh, especially where snooker is concerned. Uh, a lot of the snooker players now also play pool. And, and uh, snooker does help a lot. So, so how, often, um, how often do you practice? Uh, Monday to Thursday, religiously. And, uh, hours? and the odd weekend. How many, how many hours a day? Uh, that will be about... On average, about four hours. Four hours. Yeah. Mainly in the evenings, or in the evenings, yeah. I have a day job, so. Oh, you got a day. So, so <laughs> Amateur sport, right? Eh? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Double yeah. around. Yeah. And and when you're going through your training sessions, then in the evening, I mean, do you are you just playing, to 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 put in time, um, like they say in the world, to put put on miles if you, or or, or do you have specific drills that you go through? There the are specific drills, yeah, but the, 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 it's always better to have a good sparring partner to play with because. Um, or, or not, not only always the same one, you've got to play with different people as well. So 
you yeah. can get a different uh, sort of match practice when you're playing against someone. But there are some shots that you need to focus on also. I mean, everybody has their own weaknesses that you have to keep on uh, practicing so that you can uh, get better at that. Okay. Elton, the SA Champs was now, you mentioned to me that it, it was a social SA Champs, but of no, course... No. Uh, we had a social division also. Oh, you had a social division also. We had okay. six divisions there, um, which was under 23s, our ladies, our seniors, our opens, our masters and our socials. All right, look, and, and, and competitors from all provinces. Competitors from all provinces. Talking about things from a provincial perspective, I, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the fact that you are the first team to officially have worn the new Western Cape Provincial Sports Confederation logo. Yeah, we're aware of it. You, how does it make you feel going to the nationals and, 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 and wearing this new logo that's made up of the six districts that's gone through quite a long process? Well, it made us firstly proud, but it also gave us the extra impetus we were looking for. Because when we went out there, one of the things that I told the guys is when we're going, we're going with a, a vision to be the best. But we need to be proud of this because we need to set a bar stick for the rest to follow. And like I said, we went up for, for, for there was 12, uh, 15 titles we were looking to, to, to try to, uh, to claim. And out of that, we claimed 12 out of the 15. So the guys actually went to go make this thing proud. We also took some runners up. So we're we looking at a photograph there, so I interrupt you, we're looking at a picture there yeah. of the National Blackpool Federation. That, that was, that's a picture from our juniors, and that was under 18 junior champion Kevin Martin, who was also part of under 23 winning team that went away. Is that um, Kevin on the right hand that, side? That's there? Kevin on the right hand side, yeah. Okay. So he did well in both, and that is Craig Peterson, he's under 14 champion. champion. Uh, that was at our juniors also. Yeah. We took all four titles that was up for grabs there. Did he have we a bad day there? He's looking rather angry. <laughs> he, I'm not that's sure. That's just his look to make the competitor uh, scared. Uh, is that his, 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 uh, his, his game face? His game face. <laughs> but I think his best moment that he had is, was in our trials. He, we actually took him up to around the 23 trials and then he played in our men's open trials. Yeah. And his ambition was to play against How old his... How is he? He's, he's now 11. He's 11. And his ambition was to play against his hero and his hero is Paul Bennett who's sitting here. And when he played that thing, he came whole day just to play Paul Bennett. Really? He took out, <laughs> beat everybody in Paul's team except Paul. And it came very close. I think it was a black and he just didn't drop yeah. it. But he, he held his head up high. And I mean, for an 11 year old to come Shop. up against the best guys, he ended in the Shop. top 80. Paul, how does it so feel for you uh, playing against uh, uh, a youngster like, like that, 11? Who intimidating. Yeah? <laughs> intimidating. I mean, uh, then, you, then you're up against it because yeah. you, you lose against that. Exactly. Uh, a kid. There's a lot to lose there, but. Um, the talent, I've always favoured uh, talent coming up to the yeah, ranks and, and, yeah. and you always have to, to, to guide them because uh, they are immature, obviously. So, yeah. well, What do you do to guide them? Yeah, you, you know, you've got you to gotta keep them humble and, and, and listen to <coughs> the game and, and don't, let, don't, don't get too uh, involved with this. You've got school yeah. to concentrate on too, but, but uh, practice, practice, practice. Is, 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 I mean, uh, black ball, you obviously have to come, you, you've got to, like any other sport, you've got to, Remind the kids, remember you must focus on your studies. Your studies. Uh, Got it. Five. Comes five. priority for you guys? It's not only the kids that we have to focus on, it's also the young under 23s. Um, we got stars who are currently practicing five hours a day and not catering and getting themselves a career. So we need to also tell them there's more to the game than just being the top player, but also looking at the future for yourself outside yeah. the sport. So we try to get them and help them get jobs and get themselves good careers and get their focus correctly where they can balance their lives. Because most of these guys got youthful exuberance. I mean, they shoot, they shoot with the youthful exuberance, but you need to teach them the other side of life so they can take that into the sport also so they learn the tactical side and also how they're going to life and approaching life differently. Because there's one guy who stand up in the morning, he shoots, eats, sleeps, pull, but at 22 years old, you need something else besides the pool is not going to put food on his table yeah. unless he becomes professional and if that's his ambition he needs to get something in the meantime so we how hard is it uh, how hard does it become professional are they professional black ball pool players around the world yes. in around the world yes but not in south africa kind of yeah is it possible for i mean we see it on the other sports rugby and you know yeah, yeah, basketball this, this or whatever where, yeah this is where sponsors come in and and, and for us it, it's tough uh, we've been always battling to get sponsors to come on board to help us and, and we have so much talent in, in, in the Western Cape like you won't believe. I mean, uh, we, we've completely dominated this, this nationals like, like no other province has ever done. Yeah. Uh, Houting has, has, has uh, dominated before and uh, Natal as well. But on this level that we've done now. What do you think made the difference? Why is it that you, w you went to the, to the SA Champs this year 
now in January. Why were you so much stronger than before? I think we we had a good con Rodri and, and we really? good, Does good that make a difference? Always. Spanchius? Always. But all of the teamwork, this was a group effort that started earlier where the players, the captains, the league guys, we put um, tournaments, things in place, um, competitions against each other. And before we went away, we had practice sessions, we got the teams together, we got guys speaking to focus, so they got to know each other better. They got to understand playing each other. We were always in that competition mode through the year. And when they went into the games, that camaraderie was great. The competition yeah, spirit was great. So, Paul, yeah, I mean, uh, maybe you can just elaborate a little bit on that. I mean, as a as a Blackpool player, one would think that it's a you know it's an individual sport. Yeah. Um, but you're saying that, and 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 many other sports are individual sports. And if the if the crowd is behind them, it can lift the spirit of the athlete. Yeah. Um, you're saying that Blackpool has got the same kind of effect. Uh, yes. If the camaraderie and so on is there. Yes. Yes. The support and the camaraderie is there. If the spirit is right, and then it, it motivates you. It's uh, yeah. any sport. You, you if you get the proper motivation from, from all angles, then you can only do one thing but do well. Okay, so let's go back to your performance here now. Um, you say you, you weren't too happy with your own performance. No, no, uh, I wasn't good enough. Are you just being modest or...? No, I wasn't good enough. <laughs> Simple. Uh, well, if everybody wants to win and, and with the level of competition that we have yeah. uh, uh, nationally these days, and especially in the Western Cape also, it's tough. Uh, now you're a, I mean you, you're you're only one person can win. Yeah, and and uh, you you can't always choose when to win. You gotta accept it when it comes. Well, it's interesting that you say it because what I was asking now, you're an experienced campaigner, yes. and um, you know the young athletes out there will often feel like they went to a tournament, they didn't do very well, and they yes. feel like they didn't do well enough. Yes. Exactly what you just said. Yeah. How do you remedy that, or what do you do to to make sure that you don't get down on yourself and you keep going forward? That should actually keep keep you coming back. You you, you go work, you go back home, you go back to the drawing board, you start over, you work harder. You, you already have a plan of, of, of where you went wrong. Yeah. So you, that's the first thing you start to work on. What was the biggest challenges for you guys going to this tournament? Biggest challenges? That's a tough one. Elton, I know what you're going to say. You're gonna, probably going to say money. <laughs> yeah, no, we were going to say most of our challenges came ma monetary-wise because we couldn't do for them what we would like to do yeah. and come there early enough and do what you want. Even so, the, the results say we did outstandingly well. Yeah. I think we could have still done... done we would have better done even being better making them more comfortable and getting yeah. the guys more closer together because yeah. we had to get people settled scattered from each other where we would like to have had everybody all under one one umbrella one roof okay. we could have done more more chatting more of the mental side of the game did you walk out with a with a, with, a, with a couple of titles here yeah, like as in south african championship yes, yes. Uh, i mean sa champ yes. sa team champ sa junior champ just give us a rundown of okay. some of those titles and some of the names okay in the under 23s we had two of our players playing in the final against each other uh, K uh, cameron tops yeah he was a uh, current champion he, he became he became two-time champion now he won his championship back at the loss last year he beat uh, jason J jackson in the final so we were supporting both our players. Then they, we also won the team event there. Um, I was the manager of the under 23 team. Um, then we had the ladies, where we had we won the ladies division and the runners up spot we took there, our first and second teams. And then two of our ladies played in the final against each other where Fatima Pakten beat Joy Willingberg. And um, I think that was great for us. Then the, the last um, event in, in that week was our seniors, where our seniors one team won the seniors event. We missed out on the runners-up spot though there. And then um, Aziz Williams from Western Cape became the SA champ there. So we took all the SA champs basically on that week. We won the, sp we lost the speed pool in the under 23s. Yeah. We won the speed pool in the ladies and we won the speed pool in the seniors. So, so the you walked, uh, it was a clean, clean sweep for so you So the guys, only thing yeah. we lost that week was the speed pool under 23s, which we were sad about. Yeah, well, you're going to have to get your act together. It's obviously not acceptable <laughs> going with the Western Cape Colours to Joburg and, and, and not walking away with a 100% success rate. But the second week we did just better. No, just not good enough. It's just <laughs> no. Well done, guys. Congratulations. Mm. Just lastly, um, when is the next competition? The next competition will be in the year's time. We're having an AGM in May. We will officially decide whether it will be in January or February. Okay, that's the next national competition. Yeah, and okay. we'll also decide but whether the next local the competition, game. if somebody wants to come and watch. Hasn't been set We're having an AGM. Um, kind of we're having a, actually a bus parade um, on Saturday, okay. and we'll take right, in so the, you the dates for the AGM. Your fixtures yet. All yeah. Right, folks, of course, uh, Black Ball doing fantastic there. Um, 
uh, going to the South African Championships and walking away with all of the titles. That's really good. Elton, uh, congratulations. Thanks for joining us on Sports Federation TV. And uh, to you and the athletes out there, uh, we wish you guys the very best. Uh, and we see you soon. Thank you very much. Paul the Legend. Uh, that's what we've got you down here is Paul the Legend. <laughs> it's a, how they wrote it down, Paul the Legend. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we obviously continue to watch your progress keenly, and I'm sure the youngsters out there will be watching you as closely. Thank you, JP. There we go, folks. Uh, Sports Federation TV, of course, uh, we're talking about sport in and around the uh, Western Cape. When we come back, uh, we'll be chatting with uh, Elana Mayer about the new academy that has launched out of Stellenbosch. It's called EnduroCAD. A little bit later in the show, we'll also catch up uh, with the guys from ice hockey after the recent World Champs here in Cape Town, the ice hockey World Championships. Back with you after the break.